Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 30th, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. Did the Ambien make Roseanne do it? Okay, my friends. Uh, the Roseanne Barr scandal is now getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So, as you know, Roseanne was canceled yesterday by uh, essentially ABC News Disney executive. Sorry, ABC Disney executive Bob Iger was the one who made the ultimate call. And the reason why was because of a despicable tweet that she made in which she herself has apologized for, where she said essentially Valerie Jarrett is the product, the love child of the Muslim Brotherhood and the Planet of the Apes. And even though she apologized and said it was a bad joke, immediately the mainstream media immediately leftist Hollywood, immediately the uh, cultural elites pounced on Roseanne Barr, the Moonbats in particular, demanding that she be fired immediately. And of course, within hours, the uh, entertainment president of ABC called, told her she's gone, and then issued a statement saying her comments were abhorrent, repugnant, and supposedly inconsistent with the values of ABC, and more importantly, the parent company Disney, which owns ABC. Roseanne Barr then issued the following tweets, she didn't like many tweets, but one of them was a clear apology. What she said was, quote, don't feel sorry for me, guys. I just want to apologize to the hundreds of people and wonderful writers, in parentheses, all liberal, and talented actors who lost their jobs on my show due to my stupid tweet. I will be on Joe Rogan's podcast Friday. In other words, you'll hear more from me in a couple days on this podcast. Now, she then went on to say, and she said it repeatedly, this is not to excuse my behavior or to rationalize my behavior. It is simply to explain my behavior. She said, I was on Ambien, the, the sleeping pill. And she said, because she was on Ambien, you know, your, your filters are down, you're more uninhibited, you don't, you're not thinking straight. And she just started a Twitter storm that ended up with her making a gross insult of Valerie Jarrett and eventually costing her her job. Now, to be very candid with you, okay, like I'm in the confessional, I don't think it was just the Ambien. I think it was Memorial Day, drinking, beer, whatever it may be, plus the Ambien. You mix the alcohol and the Ambien, and basically what you had was a drunken rant. It's no different, say, than at a bar. People got to have a couple, two drink, a couple, you know, a couple of drinks, one too many, and before you know it, they're making obnoxious jokes or whatever it may be. But in this case, she did it on Twitter. And let's be clear here. The liberal elites, Hollywood in particular, wanted Roseanne Barr out because she had the top rated show on television. That show was not just the top rated show. It was a show that was actually sympathetic to President Trump. It was a show that actually portrayed people who defended and voted for Trump in a positive light. And I'll tell you when Roseanne Barr's goose was cooked. It wasn't this tweet. They were waiting to take her down. It was obvious. It's when she went on Jimmy Kimmel, another, by the way, peddler of hate, but nothing happens to good old Jimmy, but let that go. Okay, He's another moral sewer, but let that go. When she went on Jimmy Kimmel, and he asked her, okay, you're playing this character that voted for Trump, but you didn't vote for Trump. And she said, I did. And you can all blank yourselves. Something to that effect. In other words, blank yourselves. I know you can't stand me for it, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I actually did. In real life, I really did vote for the guy. And so that show doesn't matter that it was the top-rated show. 
Doesn't matter how much money it was bringing into ABC. It doesn't matter. It was only the, the only decent show they probably had in their entire lineup. The fact that she openly admitted that she had voted and she supports President Trump, not just as her character on the show, but in real life, right away, she was persona non grata. Right away, she had become toxic. Right away, the head haunt shows at ABC at every cocktail party in Hollywood were saying, "All of how could you have Roseanne Barr on? She, she voted and supports Donald Trump. She became an embarrassment to them. And so they were looking for any reason to get her. Any reason. And of course, they wanted to cut her professional throat, and she gave them the knife to do it by putting out that really despicable, repugnant tweet. And so they got her. But the question is this. Listen now to the response from Ambien. Now, she's not using She said, I think, 30 times on Twitter. I'm not using it as an excuse. I'm not rationalizing. I'm trying to explain to you what happened. I'll tell you what happened. Popped a few Ambien pills. I think she mixed it with alcohol, which you should never do. And before you know it, there was basically a drunken Twitter rant, okay? But she's saying, look, I was on Ambien, and stuff came out that shouldn't have come out. Ambien, the maker of Ambien, has now fired back, saying, quote, racism is not a side effect of our drug. So even the maker of Ambien is now piling on Roseanne Barr. Her own talent agency has fired her, saying that she's a racist, she's a bigot, she doesn't represent their values, and they don't want her as a client, so they've thrown her out on the street. So, ABC has fired her, her client agency has, has gotten rid of her, her talent agency, forgive me, has gotten rid of her, uh, even the drug maker Ambien is disowning her. Every major Hollywood celebrity came out, denounced a Roseanne Barr, and was dancing on her professional grave. CNN, NBC, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, the Boston Globe, the Washington Post, the New York Times, all of them have come out and said, ABC not only did the right thing, but listen to this, ABC should be praised for its courage in getting rid of Roseanne Barr. Really? Courage. How about Joy Behar? Say what you want about Roseanne Barr. She did this in private. This was on her private Twitter account. She didn't do it on her show. She didn't inject it in her show. She said it on her private Twitter account. Yet Joy Behar, on The View on her show, called Mike Pence mentally ill for being a Christian and said all Christians, obviously, are mentally ill because they're talking to Jesus. You don't believe me? Listen to Joy Behar. Roll it, Brittany. It's one thing to talk to Jesus. It's another thing when Jesus talks to you. Exactly. Okay, well, that's different. That's different. That's called mental illness, if I'm not correct. Wait. My question is, can I talk to Mary Magdalene without his wife in the room? <laughs> now, the Disney president, Bob Iger, according to Valerie Jarrett yesterday, called Valerie Jarrett personally and apologized to her said, I want you to know we're going to fire her, but before I fire her, I want you to know we're going to cancel We're going to cancel her show because this kind of racist bigotry is unacceptable to me. Tell me, did Mike Pence get a call? Mike Pence never got a call. How come it's okay for Joy Behar to smear, slander, and engage in the most despicable bigotry against Christians, yet Mike Pence never got a call? Joy Behar was never fired. In fact, only after an immense backlash and blowback from Christians all over the country did she have to issue a very mild milk toast apology. Basically a non-apology apology. She kept her she's on the show. She kept her job. Bob Iger, Bob Iger didn't call up uh, uh Mike Pence. Furthermore, President Trump is now demanding an apology from ABC as well. And I don't blame him. Here is now what he's, what he's now tweeted out. I mean, and think about it. How many times have they called him gorilla? 
uh, an ape, uh, a Hitler. Uh, I mean, you know, I got to tell you this, between you and me, I'd much rather be called an ape than be called Adolf Hitler. You're talking about a fictional character on a fictional whatever movie or whatever Planet of the Apes was. TV show, movie, whatever. That's a fictional character. Adolf Hitler murdered tens of millions of people. Ma Adolf Hitler was a psychopathic madman with the blood of millions on his hands. I'd much rather be called a gorilla than Adolf Hitler. You don't get worse than calling somebody Adolf Hitler. ABC, the characters on ABC, the shows on ABC, Joy Behar, Whoopi Goldberg, I can run down the whole list, have said infinitely worse things about President Trump or about Christians or about middle Americans or about conservatives. I could go down the whole list than was said about Roseanne Barr. Sorry, that, that was said about Valerie, Valerie Jared by Roseanne Barr. So, President Trump tweeted this. Bob Iger of ABC called Valerie Jared to let her know that, quote, ABC does not tolerate comments like those made by Roseanne Barr. Gee, he never called President Donald Trump to apologize for the horrible statements made and said about me on ABC. Maybe I just didn't get the call. No, no, Mr. President, he never called. Because what you're seeing now in liberal Hollywood is a despicable double standard and the utmost, the greatest hypocrisy of our time, which is that liberals can say the most outrageous, bigoted, racist, slanderous things imaginable, and nothing happens to them. But if you happen to be a Trump supporter or a Trump voter, like Roseanne Barr, they will sick the thought police on you, they will sick political correctness on you, and they will destroy you. What you saw yesterday was the high-tech lynching of a Trump supporter. And coming up next, I'm going to have somebody on, you got to listen to this, who says, why the hell did Roseanne even apologize in the first place? ABC had no right and had no business to fire Roseanne Barr. That, your calls, next. 12.22 here on the great WRKO. Jeff Cooner, Boston's bulldozer. Okay, my friends. So, everybody now in the mainstream media and in, in Hollywood are congratulating ABC. In fact, ABC's patting itself on the back, saying they did the right thing to fire Roseanne Barr for the allegedly racist tweet that she issued about Valerie Jared. Well, joining us now is Dr. Grace Wodo. She is a columnist at the Boston Broadside. Dr. Grace putting liberals in their place. You can read her work at bostonbroadside.com. She vehemently disagrees with ABC's decision, and she says, in fact, this whole story is very upsetting. Dr. Grace, thank you so much for coming on the Cooner Report. Why do you think what ABC did was so wrong and outrageous? Jeff, well, thank you for having me on. Look, first of all, I think that uh, Roseanne's comments were repugnant and disgusting and hateful, and uh, I don't want anybody to misunderstand what I'm saying. However, the question we have to ask ourselves is this. How much control over our private life does an employer have or should an employer have? What Roseanne did was on her own private time, a Twitter account is a voluntary association. Yes, it may be displayed in public, but it was her own private time. Had she misbehaved on the set, I would say, okay, that's a firing offense. But how much control does any company, should any company have over what we do and say in private? Now, let me flip this example. What if I'm a conservative uh, employer and I know that my employee said on Twitter that she had sex with two men on Saturday night? Now, I find that morally repugnant. Do I have the right to fire her? No, because there's a distinction between our private lives and our public life. Or so we've been told by liberals until now. You know, I can't get their story straight. That's the problem I'm having. I don't know what rule they're operating on on any given time. And, Jeff, you nailed it. There are a ton of double standards. Joy Reid issued a lot of homophobic 
um, uh, tons of homophobic writing, so-called. It was very offensive to many people. Yes, on her blog. On her blog, she got to keep her job. And what about another example? Charlie Sheen misbehaved for so long. He was the star of Two and a Half Men. He misbehaved for a long time. It took them a while. They finally fired him. But when they fired him, they only fired him. They didn't cancel the whole show. In this case, even if you say, okay, Roseanne was over the top, we want to get rid of her, she's fired, why did they cancel the whole show? The fact that they canceled the whole show tells you this is not about Roseanne, this is not about race, this is not about morality, this is all about Donald Trump. The show ultimately showed people who were sympathetic to Trump, they were Trump voters, Trump values, and you know what? There's no other show out there like it. That show was going to break a cultural barrier, which means that it would be okay on TV to be a Trump voter in the culture. I'm not talking about just like in the political arena, but in the culture. And ABC couldn't have that. It's just what they did to Duck Dynasty. That's what this story really is about. And as a country, we have to ask ourselves this fundamental question. Are we free or are we not free? Because... Last I heard, this was supposed to be America, where we're allowed to think and say whatever we want to say. Well, you're not free if you say the wrong thing. You lose your job. Your colleagues lose their job. Everybody's fired, and the nation brands you a racist. This is disgusting. This has got to stop. I mean, think about it. If Roseanne had tweeted, I had sex with two men Saturday night, and somebody said, that is really shameful, deplorable behavior, everybody would say, don't slut shame. Don't slut shame. So there's some things that we can't do in terms of vilifying somebody. But with Roseanne, if it's racist, yes, just brand her, label her, throw that mud at her. Not only destroy her, destroy the show, destroy the cast members, destroy her reputation completely. It's scorched earth. This has got to stop. This is not America. People should be free. Employers have only some control over what a person can and cannot do. And as a society, we just got to draw the line. And this, people are allowed to say and do what they want to say or do in their private time. That is what real freedom is, period, full stop. If you don't like it, you don't associate with that person. Dr. Grace, let me just play devil's advocate with you for a second. Twitter is not private. Twitter is a public place. Twitter is accessible to the entire public. So are you saying now that in the age of social media, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but are you saying Twitter or Facebook have become the modern day equivalent, say, of the piazza in Italy, the bar, the pub, where people gather to meet and they talk? And are you saying this was the equivalent of, let's say, she says it was ambient fueled, let's say some ambient and some booze, that this is the equivalent, let's say, of a drunken rant at a bar? And an employer firing somebody for a drunken rant at a bar where people overheard somebody say something that can be construed as racist? Is that what you're saying? Well, look, Twitter is one of those uh, forums where you have, you know, you follow somebody, you want to hear what they have to say. I wouldn't have known what Roseanne said had the media not picked up on it. I would not have known. I don't follow her. There's a lot of people I don't follow on Twitter. So Twitter, yes, it's posted in the public. It's publicly visible, but it's ultimately a voluntary association, just like Facebook. You know, so you're, you're, you're friends with some people on Facebook, and therefore you're privy to what they're saying. So it is, in my view, that falls much more in the sphere of it's a private, voluntary association that might have some public repercussions. Okay, look, what's what she did dumb in the age in which we live in? Of course it was. But she immediately apologized for it. She did apologize for it. And it was ultimately what I would classify as private conduct. I mean, if she had posted something else that was, uh, let's say she had posted something like she would share some part of her private life. I had an abortion. And conservatives were vilifying her. Liberals would say we have no right to judge Roseanne Barr's actions in her private life, even if she posted it on Twitter. So what's the difference? I think this, as I said, Jeff, it's got to stop. Social media is exactly that. It is social. It is That means people are getting together of their own free will to converse with that particular person. What they say and do on social media is between them. It's consenting adults, Jeff. we got to throw that word back at the liberals. Remember the whole consenting adults? What two consenting adults do and say is their own private business. Dr. Grace, I've only got about 30 seconds left, but I want to ask you this. Let's say, let's take Twitter out of this. 
you're at a bar. Let's say you're a business owner, Dr. Grace. You have an employee. She's at a bar. And she makes a, she had a few drinks or whatever. She popped some Ambien, had a few drinks. And she says something racist, comparing somebody, say, to the Planet of the Apes. Or she says that she engaged in an orgy or that she had an abortion or many things that you would find morally despicable. Do you as an employer have the right to fire her because of what she said in a public place at a bar? Of course not. And that's the key point here. How much control over our private lives does any employer have? And for the most part, it's liberals who have told us that we're not allowed to fire people based on their private conduct, especially if it's of a sexual nature. So why are we allowed to fire people based on their private conduct when it's a matter of words, especially words that she subsequently apologized for? I mean, it's ridiculous. It's really over the top. We have been talking with Dr. Grace Voto. She is a columnist at the Boston Broadside. You can check out her work at bostonbroadside.com. Dr. Grace putting liberals in their place. Dr. Grace, I got to say, very, very interesting argument. Very interesting. Nobody else is saying what you're saying. God bless you. God bless. Pleasure to be with you. Take care. 617-266-6868. Okay, my friends. We're going to take your calls, I promise, after this short news break. Now President Trump is getting involved over the Roseanne bar, uh, the cancellation of Roseanne. He says ABC owes him an apology over horrible statements made about him on the network. Evan Heidrich is in the WRKO newsroom with those details. Take it away, Evan. 1236 here on the great WRKO. Okay, let me ask you double-barreled question. Number one, should ABC have fired Roseanne Barr for a racist tweet about Valerie Jarrett? Number one. Number two, is there a fundamental hypocrisy and double standard at the heart, not just of the Hollywood left, not just at the heart of the mainstream media, but at the heart of the left in general? Joy Behar can spew rabid anti-Christian bigotry on the show, The View, nothing. Whoopi Goldberg can be anti-Semitic and say the most vile, disgusting things about Trump. In fact, compare him to an ape and a gorilla and insult all Trump supporters as bigoted and racist. Nothing happens to her. Bill Maher in a sewer, almost every show. Michelle Wolf can look at Sarah Huckabee Sanders in her face, mock her appearance, say the most vile things, they give her a show on Netflix. In other words, liberals can be as bigoted, disgusting, vile, and racist as possible. Nothing happens. If you're a Trump supporter and, God forbid, a Trump voter, one thing that's out of line, you're gone. 617-266-6868. Is this another example of not just liberal hypocrisy, but a creeping liberal fascism? 617-266-6868. Steve in his truck. You're up first. Go ahead, Steve. Good afternoon, Jeff. Listen, something's got to be done. And when I was watching it this morning or last night with my wife, as soon as it come on, and we were watching ABC, as soon as they come on, they said they fired Roseanne because of this. And, and they couldn't even basically said it was, ra- you know, couldn't even prove it was a racist remark. They just said it was about Valerie Jarrett comparing her to somebody on Planet of the Apes. My wife said, shut off ABC. We're not watching it anymore that we're done with this pro- program. These people can insult the, the heck out of Trump and nobody does nothing. They can insult you know, conservatives. They insult us left, right and center. And, and and they, you know, this is how we're treated. But yet, if you go back and look at comedy, I mean, you know she's a comedian. She's been raunchy her whole life. Everybody knows who she is and what she is. I don't think she's a racist. But, you know, I, I think she just spews stuff off the top of her head, you know, real quickly. But if, the, if, if, we, if we took comedy on the face, Jeff, we wouldn't be able to listen to Phyllis Diller, Don Rickles, Archie Bunker, the Jeffersons, you know, all these shows that I grew up with, they were all, they all said racist things and under the guise of satire. But 
if all those shows were not on, or were not shown, we wouldn't be where we are today as far as, you know, political correctness. So I think everybody in Kuna country, and, and, and you have a better forum to get across the country, maybe we should stop watching ABC when they start losing money because we won't watch their shows. Maybe they'll put back the shows that we want to watch. Steve, I think, I think we have to go further. I don't think, because this ultimately was not an ABC decision. This was a Disney decision. And what is most disgusting here, uh, Steve, is you had the Disney CEO. He admitted this. And Valerie Jarrett admitted it. She had a town hall. I'll get to that later. She had a town hall with Al Sharpton, of all people, at MSNBC, saying, Bob, she calls him Bob. Bob, Bob Iger, called her up before he even fired Roseanne Barr. Uh, and said, I want to yeah. personally apologize to you for these racist, bigoted comments. Yet I want you to think about this, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Think about this. <laughs> when Joy Behar openly <laughs> insulted Mike Pence and every Christian in America with the most bigoted comment you could possibly make. You can't get more disgusting than that. You're a Christian. You're mentally ill. That's not bigoted. I don't know what is. Bob never called Mike Pence. They never apologized to Pence. They never apologized to Christians. And Joy Behar, she still has a show. Jeff, if, if, if Al Shopton is their voice of reasoning, we're in deep dog doo doo, pal. Thanks for letting me share. <laughs> Thank you so much, Steve. No, I think you got to, to me, I'm not just boycotting ABC. Frankly, I never watch ABC to begin with, so it's no sweat off my back. I'm going to boycott Disney. That's, I, I want to hurt them now. I want to hit them where it really hurts. And I'll tell you why. It's not because I care about Roseanne Barr. Look, you want to know the truth? I never cared for the original show, Roseanne. I thought it was coarse. I thought it was vulgar. I, 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 didn't, I don't like her comedy. I never liked her show. By the way, she's been a liberal Democrat most of her life. So she's kind of like a born-again patriot or a born-again nationalist. So, but that doesn't matter. I don't care. That, to me, is not the issue. The issue to me is a very simple one. She got rid of her because she's a Trump supporter. They got rid of her because her show was sympathetic to Trump. They got rid of her because she dared to commit blasphemy against the cult of Obama. She dared to call out and insult Valerie Jarrett. That was the great crime. It was the crime against the dear leader. Now, if they were consistent, if they said, look, we've got very high standards, we don't want any kind of bigoted comments or racist comments or vile comments or whatever it is, despicable comments, then I'd say, fine, I'm with you. I'm with you all the way. But that means Joy Behar has to go. Whoopi Goldberg has to go. They wouldn't be yucking it up with Michelle Wolf. Or at the White House correspondent, they were laughing. They freaked hell, they gave her a show. Bill Maher, they lionize him in Hollywood. I'm going to get to Joy Reid later, okay? Openly, nakedly, repeatedly, homophobic slurs and comments, blatantly. What Joy Reid said infinitely worse things about gays, lesbians, and homosexuals than Roseanne Barr ever said about Valerie Jarrett. First, she lied. She said, they hacked into my account. They didn't hack into her account. She lied. Then she said, well, it could be true. I, I just don't remember. I don't remember writing all those things. Then she said, okay, I did write those things, those disgusting, homophobic things. But I'm a different person now. Oh, so Joy Reid, not one comment over many years can say the most despicable, rabid, homophobic things imaginable. No problem. She's got a show, and they love her. Roseanne Barr, her career is destroyed. And not just Roseanne. This is what's really sick about this. Hundreds of people have lost their jobs and their livelihoods because of this. Writers, producers, camera people, behind-the-scenes people, never mind just the rest of the cast. So you're willing to destroy hundreds of people's lives over one freaking tweet? Like, are you normal? This is an assault on freedom, I'm telling you. It's an assault on freedom of speech. And it is a form of liberal tyranny and liberal fascism. This is the thought police. This is the equivalent of the Spanish Inquisition. They decide what's permissible, what's not permissible. Who professionally lives, who professionally dies. 
Look at Alec Baldwin. He has repeatedly called Trump a freaking organch- uh, an, uh, uh, a gorilla and an ape. He mocks him and vilifies him in the most despicable way imaginable. They love him on Saturday Night Live. They can't get enough of that. They're calling for the assassination and murder of the President of the United States. They can't get enough of that. Robert De Niro goes on The View and says, all I want to do is bash Trump's kick his face in. And they're yucking it up and laughing. A tweet about a fictional character on Planet of the Apes? Not even real. You Muslim Brotherhood, Planet of the Apes, you get Valerie Jarrett. Okay, it's a stupid joke. It's a sick joke. Okay. She apologized. And then she keeps apologizing. And she hasn't stopped apologizing. But that's not enough. Because in the end, you know what they're trying to do? They're trying to link Roseanne Barr to Donald Trump. What they're doing now is they're saying, you see, look at the deplorables. What did we tell you about the deplorables, huh? They're all a bunch of racist bigots. Every single one of them. That's why they're dancing on her grave. My friends, I am telling you, liberalism is not just a mental disorder. What you're seeing is a form of cultural Marxism that wants to destroy all dissent and all opposition to the regime. Roseanne Barr's sin was not that tweet. These Hollywood celebrities do infinitely worse, okay? Her sin was that she admitted to Jimmy Kimmel, I voted for Donald Trump, and if you don't like it, all of you can blank off. And she made a show that if it continued its run, would have made it culturally acceptable, permissible to actually like and support this president. And that's when they said, we've got to take her out. And they were waiting. One tweet, boom, they saw their opportunity and they pounced. 12.50 12.50 here on the great WRKO. Jeff Cooner, Boston's bulldozer, cleaning up the liberal bull. You can also text us at WRKO, so we know it's for us, whatever your message is, to 70470, 7470. Uh, a couple of really interesting texts. 603, Jeff, I despise Michelle Wolf. But let's be honest here. She already had that Netflix gig before the White House Correspondents' Dinner ever took place. No, you're right, 603. My point is, they didn't cancel it. That's my point. Roseanne had her show before she issued her tweet. They canceled it. Michelle Wolf, they didn't cancel it. Now, Michelle Wolf, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, you can listen to her, listen to it again. It's so vile, you can't even watch it. But if you can, force yourself. Much more racist, much more bigoted, much more despicable, much more odious than anything Roseanne Barr said in that tweet. It was bad. What she said was horrible. Don't get me wrong. But ay ay ay, no problem. Michelle Wolf's got a job. Roseanne Barr doesn't. That's my point. Um, by the way, the left. This is just a, um, uh, just a sense. I'm getting a lot of this, by the way. But this is just a sense of what the moon bats are like. Okay? Listen to this. I'm giving you the, 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 the nicer version. This is from 781. Wow. You peddle so much hate for half the USA. Thank God your listeners are all dying off. They want us to die. I- I'm telling you. I'm being honest with you. That's how much they hate us. Hillary Clinton said it. We're deplorables. We're racist, sexist, bigoted, homophobic, Islam, uh, Islamophobic, xenophobic. We're irredeemable. That's what the Hollywood left thinks of us and of middle America. And that Roseanne Barr did a show about middle America and why they support and sympathize Trump and then admitted herself. Yeah, I voted for Trump. Verboten. It is forbidden. They didn't fire her because of the tweet. They fired her as the pretext using the tweet. That's what this is all about, in my humble opinion. Larry in Belmont, you're up next. Go ahead, Larry. Uh, Good afternoon, Jeff. Larry, hi. So, 
set everything else aside, let's go right to this particular show. If Disney's all high and mighty with their morality, how come Wanda Sykes was the executive director? Now, Larry, what's... Would, you know, Wanda Sykes is uh, an African-American lesbian comedian who is also the executive director of The Roseanne Show. Yes. The new, the new reboot. Yes. Okay? She made a big public stink about having to walk away from the show because she couldn't take the racism. Yes. If you, you can Google it or you can YouTube it, she has an opening act where she goes on about a five-minute rant two years ago about how this country just elected an orangutan. And that's the mildest of her act. Oh, I know that. Yet she, ha- she yet they didn't. I guess they didn't vet her before they hired her at ABC Disney. Oh no, Larry! I'm telling you, they did. They hired her because of her act. Exactly. I'm. I'm just pointing out the hypocrisy. On a, you know, you don't even have to compare apples and oranges of Joy Reid and Bill Maher. Right on the same show, one gets away with it because she's black and lesbian. One doesn't because she likes Trump. Larry, I couldn't have said it better myself. Phenomenal call. Phenomenal call. Now, you're, you're dead on about Wanda Sykes. I'm using Joy Behar. Joy Behar works at ABC, right? Roseanne Barr used to work at ABC. They both have shows. I'm, so I'm comparing what Joy Behar said to what uh, Roseanne Barr tweeted. Now, I'm telling you, Brittany, do me a favor. Play it one more time. Okay, one more time, please. Listen to her. Look at what she says about Mike Pence. She's calling him insane because he's a Christian. In other words, Christianity equals insanity. Okay? So she's insulting him and every Christian in the country. It is pure, unadulterated, anti-Christian bigotry. I mean, there's no getting around it. Now, roll it, roll, Brittany, roll it again, please. It's one thing to talk to Jesus. Mm. It's another thing when Jesus talks to you. Exactly. Okay, well, Mm. If mm. I'm not correct, mm. my question is, can I talk to Mary Magdalene without his wife in the room? Mm. Mm. Mary Magdalene, if you know, was a former prostitute, okay, that ended up following Jesus. But let that go. Let that go, okay? They're yucking it up. They love it. They were clapping, yucking it up. How come Joy Behar wasn't fired? Okay? Why didn't Bob Iger give Mike Pence a call? Now, Trump wants an apology, too. I completely agree with him. But, you see, Bob doesn't call Donald, and he doesn't call Mike. But the dear leader, the cult of Obama, Valerie, <laughs> he gave her a personal call to apologize. Now, quickly, who is Valerie Jared? Who is Valerie Jared? The architect of the Iran nuclear deal wanted to nuke up the Islamo Nazis in Tehran. Behind the scenes, it's all documented, the biggest supporter of the Arab Spring openly called for radical Islamic governments to seize power all across the Middle East. Told Obama to ignore ISIS. Turned a blind eye, said to hell with those Christians being slaughtered in the Middle East. The mastermind of the cover-up of Benghazi. The terrorist mass murder of four Americans, including our ambassador. The one that told Obama repeatedly, lie about Obamacare. Tell them to their face, if you like your health care, you can keep it. You like your plan, you can keep it. You like your doctor, you can keep it. I could go on about who Valerie Jarrett is. Valerie Jarrett is a despicable human being who did more damage to the United States outside of the dear leader than I think anybody else. So... Let me make a proper Twitter joke, or in this case, a joke on the air, okay? Don't delete this, Brittany. What do you get when you merge uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and the Planet of the Apes? You know what you get? You get one of the most destructive individuals in the history of the United States. That's what you get. Now, I'm just telling you, that's a fact. That's who Valerie Jared is. I don't care about her race. I don't care how she looks. I don't care about her skin color. I don't care about anything. What I'm telling you is, this woman deserves no protecting from the likes of Bob Iger. Yet he called her. But he wouldn't call Mike, and he wouldn't call President Trump. And that's all you need to know. 
617-266-6868. Maria in Boston. You're up next. Go ahead, Maria. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Um, I just have a couple of things to say. First off, they shouldn't have canceled the show. It should have been left to the free market. If we want to watch it, we watch it. If we don't, we don't. And the ratings make it go away or stay. Secondly, what what are the rules these days? Uh, uh, are the rules clearly different? Is this how we have to live that conservatives keep your mouth shut? Do not say anything. I don't care if, you co- if you're a comedian or, or whatever you classify yourself as. You, you have no place in society to say anything about anybody. But the left, they can say the most horrible things about all of us from a, a presidential candidate uh, and a president, Obama, uh, that, from him down to the lowest form of life can say the most horrible things about those of us that that think differently than they do. And they can get away with it. They, most of them don't have to apologize. They don't have to do anything. They can go away for a week and come back. Oh, yeah, it's all good. You know, we understand. You're a comedian. You feel that way. Or you're an average person. You feel that way. Whatever. The third thing I want to say is if we're going on Valerie Jarrett's looks, I'm claiming appropriation. Because she clearly does not bring her, she doesn't, she doesn't put herself out there as a black woman. Uh, Maria, I gotta go. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. I'm literally up against it. I promise, Valerie Jared now blames Trump. I've got that story, but first, President Trump is going after Attorney General Jeff Sessions on Twitter. It's about time. Evan Heidenrich is in the WRKO newsroom with those details. What are they, Evan?